when we give up our egoic aspects, we realize that we aren't another person's healer. They're their own healer. We provide the space and safety for them to access what's there. And so, in order to do that, you must be willing to lay down your egoic path and come out and say in a humble fashion, whatever it is you need, I will show up honestly for by providing safe space for you and offering a competency through my stewardship, my effort, that makes me humble. And so in my way, I often say, it's for me um, asking permission to bring my unearned intimacy into their intimate space because mine is on the outside. They give me the privilege to walk in. And then when I'm there to listen to the pathways, their psyches, their soul is directing me and their body is, is vibrating uh, toward a, uh, uh, an amelioration that I otherwise would not have seen. So the calling is when you listen to the sacred voice, the sacred voice that um, calls to you, that says to you, it's time. You're here with purpose. You mentioned um, entering into the, the situation or the, the session with unearned intimacy. And I know that you've, you've, you've taught and encouraged uh, me in, in, in our time together about the importance of sacred space and, and creating a safe environment for someone else's story to, to be uh, revealed or, or um, uh, exposed, if you will. Um, so it's, there's, there's this idea of energetic ethics. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that, what that really entails and, and, and kind of tying in this idea of calling and this idea of having these potential gifts that may or may not be cultivated by the culture with, with, with which we're, we're brought up in and with our primary and secondary education. We don't, we don't necessarily teach meditation. We don't necessarily uh, teach the human being to connect with that spiritual aspect of their being which, which the soulful aspect of the being, which is, which is where this, this, this knowing and this concept of a, or this idea of a calling, correct me if I'm wrong, comes from. So how can, uh, what, what would you be able to, to share with us regarding uh, that whole idea of unearned intimacy, energy ethics, so to speak? What is, what is that all about and, and what does that entail? How can we become more productive in our, in our, in our pursuit of encouraging and loving and caring for other people? I think out of all the questions you've been asking, and they're brilliant, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, as I'm sitting here and you're interviewing me, I feel like sitting in the audience or in a, on a seat and listening to you for about a couple of hours. <laughs> what, what you've gleaned over the years is phenomenal, phenomenal. You're, it's, it's wonderful. But one of the things that comes to mind when you talk about inter energetic um, ethics and some of the things that we've been chatting about uh, thus far, for me, it's the dignity of informed consent. I'm going yes. to tell you first what my plan of action is in your treatment. I want you to know my conceptualization based on um, what you've allowed me to see in you. And I want to play it back to you, summarize and ask you if I have permission to proceed. And this is what um, proceeding looks like. And if they say, indeed, and then I'll say, yes, but as we continue to venture, I will stop at times and ask you, how are you doing? Is this okay? Can we go further? There are guidelines. And I am bound by certain ethical requirements. And so if those eth ethical requirements don't meet some of your um, fears or comfort zones or boundaries, 
let me know because this therapy is about you and it's important that you have the, uh, the uh, quintessential aspects of confidentiality, professionalism, protectedness, and for you to know that I intend to make every indefatigable effort to make certain that what you came in here asking for can be provided or else I ethically will refer you to someone else I may know that could help in this work with your journey to healing. I think that that is a very important aspect as uh, healers, as people in this kind of practice holistically that we have to pay attention to. Because too often I've seen people uh, not perform as healers but as magicians, uh, which um, the notoriety then is for them uh, to be ostentatious at parties or in settings where they can say, uh, I can read your energy field and I can see that there's a shoulder or, or uh, uh, quadratus lumbarum, a QL or something, a knee that seems to be have blockage in it and the, it, with no intention of taking care of it right then and there and shouldn't in a non-private, non-clinical um, um, setting. Um, simply spew out things that perhaps are private and could be embarrassing and revealing things that, that are not appropriate. And so I am, um, and, and, and I also am very vehement, as you've known through the years, about knowing that even though the person has given us permission to work with them, their body, their personage, their spirit belongs to them. It is not mine to determine. And that's why I get into the aspects of domination. That there can be people who come into the dominant uh, spirit with uh, a feeling of righteousness. I'm, I'm doing good, so therefore, as opposed to the person who's doing bad, but domination is domination. It's when I decide I know better than you what's good for you instead of asking you and guiding you into the power of you. That's my answer. I always want to say that's such a great answer. It's just, it just is, I guess, right? It is, it is well, that's why the editors, answer. they'll just edit that part away. Like, we don't know how great his answer was. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for asking that, though. That was very, uh, that's very important to me.